In the previous video, we used a two-observer diagram to express the velocity of an object with this world line in two different reference frames, in the primed moving frame and in the unprimed frame. In this video, we'll use algebra, specifically the Lorentz transformations, to come up with a more general result. We'll come up with a formula that will relate the velocity in one frame to the velocity in another frame. So we'll start with a similar picture, a two-observer diagram, and we want to know the velocity of the object given by this, or described by this world line. So let me start by thinking about the speed in the um, unprimed frame. So the speed, velocity, is um, delta x. So this will be delta x. And then this is delta t. So it's delta x. over delta t. And um, another way to think of that delta, let's call this position, these coordinates, x and t. So delta x is really just x, because it's like x minus 0. And delta t is really just t, because it's t minus 0. And so um, since we're taking one of the points to be the origin, the speed is really just x over t. So I mention that to justify that the formula that, that I can use the Lorentz transformations with a delta x and a delta t, because a delta x is really just an x in this setting. So um, let's go back and remind ourselves of the Lorentz transformations that translates from one uh, space-time coordinates from one reference frame into another. So we have this for x, and we have this for t. And so I'm just going to um, use delta x and delta t for x and t, and plug into here. So I'm, uh, I'll do that here. So v is going to be delta x over delta t. And delta x is this, gamma, beta, delta t prime plus delta x prime. And t is just this, gamma, delta t prime plus beta, uh, delta x prime. All right, so there it is. That's a formula. We're going to do just a little bit of algebra to get this into a more useful form. So I'll do that over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor a delta t squared out of the top and the bottom. And you'll see why this is a nice thing to do in a moment. Let me finish writing and then I'll explain what's going on. One thing that's going on is my Sharpie is slowly dying. Okay, so from here to here, all I did was math. I just factored out a delta prime. So to see that this is a legal move, let's imagine going backwards. I'd have to distribute the delta t prime. So delta t prime times beta is beta delta t prime. Delta t primed times delta x prime over delta t prime. Well, I've got a delta t prime on the top and the bottom. That's just going to take me back to delta x prime, which is this. All right, so I hope to have convinced you that this is a legal move. And now I want to show you why this is a a useful move, because it kind of looks like I made a mess. But things are going to get better really quickly. So check this out. Gamma on top, gamma on bottom. Those cancel. Delta t prime on top, delta t prime on bottom. Those cancel. And then notice this term here, delta x prime over delta t prime. That's just v prime. So this takes a particularly nice form. 
So I'm going to say, let's see, but, or hey, notice that V prime is delta X prime over delta T prime. So that tells me that this is just beta plus V prime over 1 plus beta V prime. So I just, like each of these terms that I just circled poorly in green, those are V primed because of this. So the end result is that V, I'm just going to write this over, is beta plus V primed over 1 plus beta V primed. So this would be an, if you know V prime and you want to figure out V. I could also just do some math on this, solve for V prime, and I could get this. This would be V minus beta 1 minus beta V. So these are the um, relativistic velocity transformations. Um, they're the relativistic version of the Galilean velocity transformations. And again, these equations say the same thing. It's just this one I happen to solve for V, this one I happen to solve for V prime. If you know V prime and want to figure out V, use this one. If you know V and want to figure out V prime, use this one. It's just like with the Lorentz equations. There's sort of two forms, the forward and backwards form of the Lorentz equations. Um, same thing with the velocity transformation equations. So we've got these velocity transformation equations. Let's try them out. And let's try them out on the example we just did graphically. So that's this over here. So I'll do the work um, here. I'm going to use a different color than my fading black pen. So let's do this. Um, so we know that V prime, suppose we know that three, V prime is 3 fifths and beta is 3 fifths. So that's the scenario that we had here. The blue frame is moving at a speed of 3 fifths with respect to the black frame, and we figured out that the um, green object is moving at a speed of 3 fifths with respect to the moving frame. So I've got a 3 fifths for both of these here. Um, all right, so let's use the Lorentz transformation, or the um, velocity transformation, to figure out V. So V is beta plus V prime over 1 plus beta V prime. All right, let's see what happens. So I'm just plugging in 3 fifths for everything. All right, um, I guess we could do fun with fractions. Maybe we'll just do a fun with fun with calculator instead. Um, three fifths plus three fifths. All right, that I can do. That's six fifths. Let's do that. This thing is three divided by five squared plus one. That's one point three six. All right, let's see what we get. 6 divided by 5, then divide that by 1.36, and we get 0 0.88. All right, well, let's see. The graphical version here gave us a V of about 0 0.9. So the graphical version is pretty close. This would be a more exact value because we weren't... Um, Right, estimating where these where these lines hit and so on. Um, so in any event, this is an illustration of how to use the velocity transformation equations. So again, here they are. Following this video will be a quiz where you'll practice using these formulas, and then um, another video where we'll unpack this 
and um, think a little bit more about what this is telling us.